three days before my father died, uh, I looked at his in his eyes, and I had the most profound conversation that I'd had to that moment of my life, and there was no word spoken. Hey everyone, welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakyan. We are still on site at the Transformative Technology Conference. This is our second partnership with them. We are now speaking with Charlie Hartwell. Hi, Charlie. Hey, Alan, how are you? Thanks for coming on the program. It's good to be here. <laughs> I'm so excited for this conversation, Charlie. Let's, as we, we're going to get into Bridge Builders, I'm excited. We're going to ask you some questions to start. First question is... Are we really all one? <laughs> it's so funny. I was talking to my wife about this uh, two days ago, and I described my wife as the wisdom of our family. Uh, and, and we were talking about that. And it's like the answer may be yes, we are, and yet we are separate as well. That's her wisdom. Elaborate, please. So we're all connected, but we're, we have our individuality. And so if we can understand that we're connected to everything, but that we're individual and we have our own unique essence or whatever you want to call it. So we're part of that, but we're, we're unique. That makes sense. Yeah. So, and in a, in in a sense there as a uh, nerve endings unique nerve endings of creation experiencing itself interconnected nerve endings mm -hmm. that are unique of creation experiencing itself but i can still be you and i can be brady and you guys can be me and that's the interconnectedness as well <laughs> okay well I, I don't know if you can be me. You are you are connected to me. I'm my own individuality. I'm my own unique essence. I'm connected to you. We can be, I think, connected in un, very unique ways. Uh, and I think one of my my one of my teachers a long time ago was like, you know, okay, so if you're a drop in the ocean, you're the ocean. Mm. But you're also the drop in the ocean. But then you go into the ocean, and then where's the drop? And your drop can't be my drop, and my drop can't be your drop? I'm, I'm, I'm not saying we're part of each other. We're part of the oneness. Okay. We're connected. Yes. Um, but I think I'm a unique essence, and we can interact. Our essences can interact. Okay. Okay, unique essences in the oneness. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay. How about so, the? So we started uh -huh. there. Where are we going now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are there. <laughs> we are always here. I love it. How about um, your own um, experiences of the interconnectedness? Your own experiences of maybe ego loss or unconditional love or the present, deep present moments. Um. Hmm. So I think the, for me, I grew up in a family where I was not unconditionally loved. Uh, so in my own process of awakening, it was learning how to be unconditional love to myself. Uh, and then you know, just experiencing unconditional love and understanding that that doesn't need to come from other people, that we can find that within ourselves and that we can, and, and then we can find it, the unconditional love from, you know, comes from other places as well. I don't know if that answers your question and it's only part of your question. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, what are the other, the other things mm -hmm. that you're... Yeah, feelings of interconnectedness, ego loss, pres deep present momentness. I was just talking to a guy who, um, you know, from the perspective of connectedness, who, you know, uh, 
felt a heart attack of somebody else uh, 1,500 miles away, called, said, is he having a heart attack? The answer was yes. Four years later, same thing happened. Uh, Felt that happen, called and said, uh, is somebody so-and-so having a heart attack? And this person said yes. And and then has there been one in between those times? Uh, And the answer was no. So that's a pretty, you know, from thousands of miles away, that's pretty connected, it seems to me, as a, at least as an example. Yeah, yeah. There's still much to understand about the unity of creation, but yet the unique ness of our essences this is a very abstract point it is all one yet the uniqueness of your essence is expressing itself okay is that something to understand or is that something to experience experience he said, "Understand." I was like, "I don't know if you can." That we can't understand. I'm it? not sure. Is it? Is it an? Is it? Is it for understanding or is it for experiencing? Like comprehending that. Can it be both? I don't know. I think it can be both. Could we understand all of creation? I don't think that's impossible. But is it impossible to create something more beautiful than creation? That may be possible. <laughs> Okay. We just got there with uh, our last with John conversation with yeah. John. Yeah, got it. Yeah, that there may not be anything more beautiful than uh-huh. creation. Yeah, the only thing that's impossible is to make something more beautiful than creation. creation. How do you feel about that statement? I don't really care. Creation's what? beautiful. Uh, uh. So why why would I need to create something more beautiful? Just experience the beauty of this one. Do you think anything is impossible besides making something more beautiful than creation? (laughs) Uh, Wow. Is anything impossible? I don't know. Thank you for saying I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm like sitting here saying I need to have an answer and I don't. Yeah, yeah. So I might as well shut up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the best strategies, techniques, keys, practices for us to have deeper feelings towards that unity, that interconnectedness, unconditional love presence. It's funny. So I speak at a lot of conferences and a lot of technology conferences and because I'm an investor and look at lots of different methods or paths or whatever to achieve what you're talking about. And I just say my favorite, uh, my favorite way is getting there is through the technology that's already been created, which is called mother nature. So just being out of nature, that's such, for me, individually, that's just a great way. That's the best way to connect. The quote apparently is attributed to Da Vinci, but that nature is the best teacher. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's. I don't know if na- for me, if nature is the best teacher, na- nature is the best experience mm. to connect with the, the teacher. But ultimately, <laughs> the ultimate lesson of the student is the process of learning from the teacher of creation about okay. creation All right. of, yeah, and, and nature being immersed in it is like the ultimate class Correct. room and teacher yeah 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 but that seems yeah. like that seems for me that's almost too complex it's just like 
get out in nature. Just get out in nature and just see what and just be. just be and be just experience. experience. Just watch, watch. Yes, just feel, feel, be connected. Yeah, yeah. Be in wonder for that which you. You know, you look up at a star and say it's not there anymore. Yeah, but there it is. Or some not. Yeah, you know, some yeah. are, some aren't. Yeah, but like. When you, pretty when, wild. when you look at a tree for more than three seconds, if you look for three minutes, you see newer and newer things emerge mm -hmm. and you learn more and more about the reality. Correct. And then you can learn to talk to it. How do you do that? I'm not saying I do. <laughs> How have you heard? I wrote that? a song once called, I mean, yeah, I think you can communicate with trees. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't know how I would describe they, that, commun had the, they that, communicate. Yeah. And so what doesn't we don't what does not communicate? What do you think? What does not communicate? I, I don't know. Does everything communicate? Everything has energy. Everything transmits something, right? Um, I don't know. Yeah, I think I think in some way, shape or form. Uh, but I think for me more, you know, sort of living things as opposed to inanimate objects, <laughs> uh, would communicate, you know, animals communicate, trees communicate, flowers can communicate. Mm -hmm. How do we speak the language of trees? There's books about that. <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't know if we... Uh, yeah, I think you have to be sort of on a different wavelength and not try to speak to them like you mm. speak to a human. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know how different that would be than how do you learn to, uh, you know, communicate with animals. I know animal communicators. Uh, yeah. We use animal communicators. Uh, I've been on whale watching trips with animal communicators. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, they communicate. I, I don't, I'm, I'm not saying that that's my gift, but I know there are people that are, and I have enough personal evidence to know, to, to believe that that's all possible and, and to have experienced that it's true. What do you think's the purpose of creation? Uh, expression of love, maybe. Mm. What else besides that? Maybe a way to grow. <laughs> a way to love, a way to grow. Mm -hmm. All of these experiences evolve these essences unique essences experiencing themselves unique essences experiencing themselves experiencing creation yeah. experiencing themselves yeah growth love yeah sounds right is the illusion of separation, the most upstream issue that our society faces? Say it again. Is the, the most upstream issue that our society faces that's causing almost, if not all of the issues that we mm -hmm. face, is the illusion of separation? Yeah, the I mean, so if you're disconnected from love because you've put some human barrier or perceived human barrier to say you're separated from that, that's, I would think that's the root of a lot of suffering on the planet. You think of the religions, most mostly patriarchal, all patriarchal that I 
know about in the modern world. Uh, a group of people gets together, men are in charge, men say you're separated, and that the only way you can be connected is through something else. They gain power. That's, that's, uh, they create an illusion that creates a power dynamic that keeps you, or that might keep you, uh, if you believe it, in a place of thinking that you are separated. Why would creation want to make love and growth? I don't know. What is it about those two words for you? Love and growth? Yeah. I don't know what it is. Uh, I guess just experience. And why those two experiences? What about the way they make you feel? Why do you pick those two? <laughs> That's just what came. I don't know. Now forever, I will always remember love and growth <laughs> from Charlie. Forever. Yeah. Yeah. Is that your essence? Love and growth? Uh, at some core, uh, I'd say love is my, is my essence. But in this human form, in my energy system, uh, I would be about growth, authentic leadership, um, innovation, uh, and transformation. So that's kind of, in, in this body, what I bring onto this planet is the, the energy of that. What does authentic leadership mean? <laughs> um, this is bridge builders? Yeah. No, this is everything. I, this is everything. I, since I was a kid. Yeah. Um, just whatever sort of I've... It seems to me that when I get involved with something, something's going to change. And um, I don't know if I'm answering your question, but that's just like if I look back at my life and I think of the things that I've cho chosen to get involved with... Um, Something is going to change. Something is going to grow. There's a global movement associated with it. And, um, and something's going to transform. And then your question about authentic leadership, for me, it's kind of like knowing your purpose and expressing it. Fully. And being that and removing the barriers to whatever prevents you from doing that. So the more clear we become about what we are blueprinted for as our essence, the more of an authentic leader we are. I think that's that's what I would believe. And so then you have a a radar that you've worked on that helps you identify that. Uh, radar might be a description. That might be one description. Mm -hmm. There's, I would say, yeah, radar combined with... You know, so intent is an intention a radar? If intention's a radar, then the answer to your question is yes. You know, in my life, I have sort of done certain things, said, wow, this looks cool, I'm going to get into that. 
And if that's a radar that sort of said, I want to do that, then either circumstance or intuition or something uh, happens and there I am and it's like, oh, I get, this is something I'd like to sink my teeth into and then shit starts happening. What is the relationship between for you, your intuition, presence, and your future? My intuition, my presence, and my future. And you can maybe throw uh, you yeah. can maybe throw the word planning into that mix. I'm going to put yeah. in, intuition, yeah. uh, intention, because to me that, to me that's a lot of the radar. Um, mm. Is uh, in my experience, and and really, uh, I, again, you know, credit my wife who's really taught me a lot about this. Um, my, you know, the intent. It's like make an intention be present to what shows up and then it may not look and then not have uh, not have a not not try to get in your head and try to figure out what that looks like and then watch the beauty unfold does it really work that way I don't know for me it does so you make an intention of a something and it manifests yeah does this work for people that want to be uplifted out of poverty and that want to not experience disease and does it work that way I don't know for them I can only speak for me And what my intentions are or have been. So, I, if I'm malnourished and I make intention for nourishment, does nourishment come? Um, I, for a lot of people, it doesn't. So, then how does that work then? Why would it work in certain cases and not in others? This intention. Yeah, like, I think we're talking about something different, and I don't, if I say, uh, I mean, just go to nutrition, um, you know, I like, if I say, I want a meal to show up right now, that's not going to, that's not going to happen to me either. Like, there's not going to, food's not going to fly through the window. Um, and uh, so, I think there's a difference that, there's a difference there, but I, I'm, I'm not sure that I'm that I can describe it right now. Uh, I don't, uh, and and in, in, you know, and I don't have an intent. Like um, you, you said before, like future is part of that. So I don't know what the you know a lot of the intentions that I might set for my life. I, d I make the intention. I don't know when that's going to show up in the future necessarily. I don't say I have an intention for today and this is what happens today. I set an intention and things show up in the future. So r regarding a part of your blueprint being manifested, the intention is there for it but there is no time that it must occur. It's just the intention for it mm -hmm. to. So having an intent intention for abundance is just an excellent intention, an intention of love. 
It's just an excellent intention. Just radiating love and abundance and growth. That can be an intention. So, so then this coming to the aid of those parts of our essence that are the so-called different essences within the oneness that are that are malnourished or that may have a pathology developing and their set intention their essence is set intention towards nourishment or eradication of the disease sometimes works and sometimes doesn't so then wouldn't my intention for abundance and intention for love and intention for growth sometimes work and sometimes not uh well i can't i can't speak to the you know i I can't speak to other people's experience um if you set an intention for uh for love and abundance do you know what that do you know what that necessarily looks like i don't think a lot of people necessarily know what that looks like i and you know to to go back to the uh, to the malnourishment, um, certainly I don't, you know, don't want people to be malnourished, but some of the happiest people on the planet actually are. And some the way that we might, or, or are not in abundance the way we might look at abundance in America, for mm-hmm. instance, or in the Western world. So Great point. we might define abundance as, oh my God, the house, the beach, the, all of that. And actually, um, the way we define what is abundance what is abundance correct so uh so you experience or i hear stories or in my own experience of li- working in the slums in nairobi for instance some of the hap you know there's some incredibly happy people in terrible situations some of the most kind people had the least amount of physical goods as we define it and then i hear stories of people who go get transformed because they're living in our society in the capitalist thinking abundance is about money wealth etc and they find out that's actually not what abundance is what then is an intention for abundance how do you set yours? I might just set an intention for abundance. And then you indicated there are different abundances. As though someone that may have very little is setting a completely different intention for abundance than someone with so many material possessions. Yeah, okay, but like you know to me abundance is uh watching a sunrise and the beauty of that to me that's very abundant and the way that you might view that uh you might view that there are two people watching that same sunrise and one's in abundance and having an awe experience and the other person is just watching a sunrise so part of abundance would be oh my god that is so beautiful and I'm noticing more beauty around or whatever it's a, I think it's part of it's an attitude so we may set abundance in t- intentions for abundance at something like a sunrise or sunset we may set it for be ourselves to not be impacted by a disease maybe a family member to get through a disease and creation may depending on that intention 
come in and act. There may be some sort of an acting on that intention that happens, a manifestation of that disease being gone from your family member. So uh, how do you know that having the disease in the first place isn't part of the path to abundance? And I can speak to this directly. You know, in my own experience uh, of waking up uh, and the intention you know, around that, I, there was a lot of suffering. There was a lot of death. And had I not gone through that, and the universe was actually knowing that I'm stubborn enough where it like piled it on. Uh, and so I actually had to go through that in order to enjoy the abundance or the richness of my life now. Because for me personally, I was not at a, a place to, to probably receive what I'm able to receive now. Uh, and I didn't know myself the way I knew now. And I was living under stories and conditioning that I'd grown up with that caused a lot of suffering. So how do I, you know, so the great, so I can say this, the greatest gift of my life was the death of my father. And then how do you come to reckon with, okay, he died. <laughs> you guys are laughing. Have you been doing this all day? Oh, it's very good. It's really good stuff. <laughs> wow. <sighs> Please continue. Continue with what? the greatest gift of my life was the death of my father. Please continue. So, uh, in my experience, my dad, my dad's death, um, combined, uh, I'll just say this. I struggled for a long time. My dad had cancer. Um, and in the process of him having cancer, uh, and my my business not working out the way that I wanted it to, and kind of being in a, in being in a marriage that had been dead. So they're like business dying, father dying, marriage already dead for years without really realizing it. Um, there got to be like a moment where I had this dream that I was climbing the World Trade Center, and I knew what I was going to do when I got to the top of it. And I woke up, and it's the first time that I said I need help. And in my family system, you didn't go get help. Uh, so, but I, I, I went and got help. And it, part of that was in you know, sort of pre preparation for my father's dying. When my father, three days before my father died, uh, I looked at his, in his eyes and I had the most profound conversation that I'd had to that moment of my life. And there was no word spoken. There was no time. Uh, there was no, it was just like everything that was going to change in my life um, was like, it, it was just there. Like it was just spoken. It was, we'd never had a conversation with words that were as powerful as the moments they looked into my eyes. It was cosmic. It was whatever it was, but it was a soul talking to a soul as opposed to a human talking to a human. And within that, it was um, it was the permission that he had not had in his life to wake up, and the knowing that he'd be there for me. And he was. In in his death, he was more there for, than he'd ever been in, in his life. I don't know how you explain that, but it was real. The, the greatest gift was this moment so close to the death when you felt the deepest 
connection. Yeah. How do we figure it out? <laughs> there is no way. Wow. Why did he show up so real then? Uh, I don't, first of all, like, like to try to explain it to me, it actually takes away the power of it. So oh, I'll say, I'll say that. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. But my, but, but if I go into like, he was at a place where he could, where he could access that, you know, he was, um, where he could have that conversation. Um, he would have n have had no framework or permission in his life as he had known it to have a conversation that was that transformational. And in his point of getting ready to be, you know, to be, to move on to whatever you want to, you know, describe it from his body, he was, he was in a position to go that, that deeply. Um, and I was in a position to receive it or, 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 you know, it, I, I don't want to just say it was one way from him to me. It was both. It was a both and. And you were uniquely positioned to receive it at that time. Yeah. When you say. trying to understand the why takes away the power from it may it also help those that are listening more better experience profound things like it If I could just explain it, could could us understanding, experience, getting into the feelings, the beingness of that interaction of you and your father being the gift, could our dive into the depths of that be deeply awakening and inspirational for people listening? <laughs> I have no idea. If, if people are open and hold an intention, um, this conversation may or may not be uh, opening or not. Might be something else that happens. That's I mean, who knows? Um, all, all I can say is, for me, uh, when you get into in my own experience, there is no explaining that conversation there that, that makes any sense. It is, it is so profound that words don't do it justice. And so when I try, if I try to explain it, it's a very head driven thing. This was had nothing to do with the head. Mm. This had to do with a soul connection. And I'm not sure that can be explained. Or believe, you know, for some people, believed. Could we have a soul or spirit to spirit connection happening here to that that can then be transmitted further and catalyze more awakening my answer is yes and yeah. that's why well, it's happening i don't know you know it gets transmitted and then what whatever comes of that is like on the receiver's end yes and 
th when even this sentence about the greatest gift being the father's death, your father's death, that in itself is profoundly awakening. That is. We still struggle with seeing the greatest traumas as the greatest treasures. Mm. I know of very few people who have chosen to like really awaken to their own purpose, their own higher self, whatever you want to describe that as, where suffering has not been involved. Agreed, all of the guests have those mm -hmm. experiences. Correct. you could say the coolest commonality between them is seeing their traumas as treasures. Yeah. That's really the choice. And, um, and is it not possible that, you know, for some people, that suffering will just continue as an invitation until they choose. And they still can choose never to, uh, you know, to um, accept that invitation. That's okay, too. Wow. I've had some very uh, interesting feelings from my heart throughout this conversation, and especially here at the end. I'm Hartwell. So you are Charlie Hartwell. <laughs> you are. You are. Thank you so much, Charlie. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Wow. So profound. Thank you. So <laughs> enlightening. Wow. It's been an honor. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We greatly appreciate it. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below on the episode. Let us know what you're thinking. <laughs> wow. Let us know how your heart was gushing throughout that episode. Um, please check out the links in the bio below to Charlie's work. Check out the links in the bio below to the Transformative Technology Conference. Yes, yes, go ahead, Charlie. So um, can I just say one other thing? Of course you may. So um, as part of my awakening, I found a voice. And in my father's death, uh, I, I found the voice to become the musician that I never was. Um, so in my father's death, I actually re wrote and recorded my first album, I'm on number three now, Whoa. but there's a, there, is a, there is a song uh, on that album called Soul Purpose, which is all about that conversation. <laughs> so if anybody wants to go to Spotify and play wow. Soul Purpose by Charlie Char Hartwell, Hello. you'll find it there. We'll put the link in the bio below, everyone. Um, Soul, Purpose Soul Purpose by Charlie Hartwell. Wow, wow, wow. So third album now is out. This right. is, you're on your third. And what do you play? Uh, I write the music, I sing, I play the guitar, I play the harmonica. Wow. So cool. So cool. Check out all of Charlie's links in the Bible. Check out the links to Transform of Technology Conference as well. Check out those links. Thank you to our co-producers, Brady Sprunger, Ori Shapira. Thank you both very much. Thank you. Thank you. Check out the links to our show in the bio below as well. You can support us on Patreon, PayPal, cryptocurrency. You can design cool merch and get paid. Support the artists, the entrepreneurs, the spiritual leaders, the organizations in your communities that you believe in as well. And go and build the future, everyone. Manifest your dreams into the world. We love you very much. Thank you for tuning in, and we will see you soon. Peace.